recuerdo aquel azul que hay en tus ojos Cuando miro en la ventana de mi vida Cuando escucho tu sonrisa en letanía Cuando bebo el aroma de tu risa What's going on? It's the Big Rig Bull, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer, Rashard Alexander, back in the building again. Excuse me. It's Friday, and it's the worst day of the week. I'm just kidding. But it is kind of like the bad day. I mean, like, Fridays are like the worst, but simply because the work week kind of comes to an end. None of the adjusters or anybody really is in on Saturday or Sunday. You know, you do get to work on other things and do other things and go out with your family and do stuff like that, but there's no work. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no ability to interact with other people to make money for your clients, of course. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'm never, Fridays are, you know, I'm not excited about Fridays like that. They don't really make me happy. Other than the fact that I will be able to work on my website stuff um, without any interruption for the most part. Um, but I'm not really, I don't get really excited about Fridays like that. My, my energy level is kind of like the inverse, where a lot of people kind of go into the week feeling like, uh, you know, Monday sucks, so their energy level is like down here, and it slowly kind of creeps up as they hit Friday. Mine is like the complete complete opposite where it's like Monday start off really high and I kind of creep down, you know, till Friday. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 54 with the Big Rig Bull, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer Rashard Alexander. Today we are going to cover uh, Class 1 Explosive Hazardous Materials Truck Wrecks. Or right, what do you need to look for when you're dealing with an explosive uh, truck accident here in the city of Houston, in the state of Texas, or nationally. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so when we're dealing with combination vehicles, Division 1 or 1.2 explosive materials may not be loaded on any vehicle of a combination of vehicles if number one, more than two cargo carrying vehicles are in the uh, combination. Number two, if any full trailer in the combination has a wheelbase of less than 184 inches. Number three, any vehicle in the combination is a cargo tank which is required to be marked or placarded or four, the other vehicle in the combination contains any substances, explosives, NOS, Division 1.1A, explosive initiating material, uh, or packages of Class 7 radioactive materials bearing yellow 3 materials, uh, or Division 2.3, poison gas, hazard zone A or B, or Division 6.1, poison gas, or PG-1, hazard zone A materials or hazardous materials in a portable tank or a DOT uh, spec 106A or 110A tank. Okay, when we're talking about the vehicle condition, the, uh, the vehicle that is uh, marked and placarded for transporting class one explosive hazardous materials must be free of any sharp objects that could puncture or harm the, uh, the package or materials. Uh, it must have tight floors uh, in the trailer that are aligned with non-metallic material or non-ferrous material in any portion that comes in contact with the load. Uh, it must be either a closed body trailer or it must either be a trailer with a tarp so that it is loaded and protected from moisture and sparks. Now explosives other than black powder may be, uh, may be loaded or hauled in flatbed vehicles if the explosive portions of the load are packed in uh, fire and water resistant containers or are they or if they are covered by uh, a fire and water resistant tarp. Um, one of the key things to take away from all this is that uh, cargo heaters 
um, have to be absolutely inoperable. And so you need to make sure that uh, if there is any cargo heater in the, uh, in the trailer, or in the cargo tank, I'm sorry, that it has been disconnected and it is completely, completely empty of fuel. All right, so what are the required documents that a professional truck driver must carry with them when they are transporting class one explosive hazardous material? Well, uh, the, motor carrier must uh, the, the motor carrier that is transporting a division one through, uh, through division 1.3 explosive material must furnish uh, a driver with uh, four things, and they are all required. Uh, number one is a copy of the part 397 FMCSA. Uh, number two is the instructions for an accident or a delay. And this includes the nature of the explosives being hauled, the names and phone numbers of the persons to be contacted, and precautions to be taken. As a side note, the drivers are required to sign a receipt for these documents, and the carrier must maintain these records for one year. The other two things they need to carry are uh, proper shipping papers for the hazardous materials and they must also have a written route for the shipment. Although if, uh, if the shipment is picked up somewhere along uh, beyond the terminal, uh, the truck driver, professional truck driver can actually make up a uh, route plan along the way if they picked it up, if they pick up that load later. Um, when it comes to emergency transfers, when it, we're talking about Division 1.1 through 1.3 materials, they may not be transferred from package to package, they may not be uh, transferred from container to container, they may not be transferred from vehicle to vehicle, uh, unless it is an emergency, uh, emergency situation. And when that situation arises, um, when the uh, transfer is taking place, it can only um, the warning or safety signals that are put out can only be used, uh, only are uh, the red electric lanterns or emergency reflectors or flags can be used. You can't use anything, or a truck driver can't use anything that uh, would produce a flame like oil lanterns or anything of that nature. Okay? Um, I think yesterday I already covered the fact that there is no smoking within 25 feet of a vehicle containing uh, class 1 explosive materials. Um, I think I've already covered parking, but I'll go briefly back into it. So when it comes to parking, um, you know, you're not really supposed to park on a public street or highway or within five, or within five feet of the travel portion of such roadway, okay? And that's when you're transporting this type of material, explosives. Um, on private property, uh, including truck stops and restaurants without the knowledge and consent of the person in charge of the property and who is aware of the nature of the materials can't have these materials on that type of property unless the person knows what's going on on that particular property. And uh, finally, you can't transport them within 300 feet of any bridge, tunnel, dwelling, building, or place where people work or assemble, except for brief periods necessary to the operation of the vehicle when parking elsewhere is not practical. Or not practical, sorry. The last thing is attending vehicles. Okay, so when we're talking about tending vehicles, we're talking about who has to actually watch the vehicle when it's not in operation. So a, a vehicle that is marked and placarded to transport and is transporting class one explosive materials uh, must be attended at all times by the driver or a qualified representative unless uh, the vehicle is located on the property of a carrier, shipper, or consignee. Uh, it's in a safe haven or on a construction or survey site if the vehicle contains 50 pounds or less of a Division 1.1 or 1.3 explosive material. Um, B is a lawful bailee knows the nature of the vehicle's cargo and has been instructed uh, how to handle the situation in emergency procedures. And the last thing is uh, the vehicle is within, is within the unobstructed field of vision of the bailee or is in a safe haven. Now 1.4 to 1.6 explosives must also be attended by the driver, except when operating the vehicle, which obviously, when they're operating the vehicle, they're still in attendance of the, uh, of the uh, materials. This is the Big Read Bull, take the truck accident lawyer, Rashard Alexander, signing out. Um, this is episode 54, as I said before. Class one explosive hazardous material, truck wrecks. Um, as I said before, I think early in my vlog, 
please hit that subscribe button. Uh, to let me know that you're watching this and that you think it's valuable. Um, and if not, then I'll see you later. Take it easy. Have a blessed day.